Hey, what's up guys? So not every project I work on involves uh, Arduinos and blinky LEDs. Uh, every once in a while, for example, a project is forced on you, uh, like here, fixing a broken dryer. Uh, so what I thought I'd do in this video is just walk through the uh, process uh, I went through the other night to fix this broken dryer. Um, but, you know, before I go any further, just, just a side note, keep in mind that I'm not a professional appliance repairman. And everything you see in this video is just for reference only. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments uh, down below uh, correcting me on the way I went about fixing this. So anyway, this is what I learned in taking apart a dryer and fixing it. And by the way, this is my first time doing anything like this. So a uh, little background here. Uh, the other night I was uh, doing a load of laundry. Uh, ran through the washer, no big deal, threw them in the, uh, the the load in the dryer, ran it through its cycle, went to take the clothes out, and they were still wet. So uh, obviously it was not doing its job drying the clothes, uh, but the, the main clue there was that the clothes were not warm or hot at all. So uh, basically what we had going on here was no heat. The dryer, this is an electric dryer by the way, so the, uh, the heating element was not turning on, so it should be pretty straightforward to fix something like this. And by the way, this is like the lowest end dryer you can buy. So it's just a start button and a, a knob. That's it. There's no touch screen. There's no display. There's no intelligence going on here. So, hey, I figured, well, let's take the back panels off and see what we got. And it should be pretty straightforward to fix. So uh, that's what I thought I'd do in this video, just walk you through that. It's it's. It's not the funnest project in the world, but it's pretty cool because it's something completely different from, you know, the semiconductor circuits we're always working on and things like that. So let's take a closer look. All right, we got the back panels taken off there. Uh, obviously, the first thing you do before taking anything apart is disconnect power. You know, don't be stupid. Make sure the dryer is completely unplugged. Again, this is just an electric only dryer, so just had to unplug it and uh, it is now safe. Got the back panels off, and uh, you can see it's pretty pretty simple. There's not a whole lot going on, and uh, which is what I expected. Uh, one of the cool things was, though, is that there was a little schematic taped up inside here uh, over by the knob, which is very cool. I was surprised to even see that. Um, but, you know, what we've got here is pretty basic. You know, you got the knob assembly up here. You've got the push to start button over here. Uh, and then if we just look down here, you see that we've got the main air input over here and this the heating element is down here goes up the airflow goes through here into the drum spinning your clothes around and then the uh, output part comes out through here and then down and then out the house okay and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it and what what the cool thing here is that there is no processor there's no intelligence here at all it's this is a purely an electromechanical system all controlled by the knob assembly and uh, and what I did here is I actually scanned in that schematic and I've got a PDF pulled up over here and uh, if we take a look at this uh, you can see that um, there's really you know not a whole lot here that's it so there's actually two parts of this they sell the same version uh, the same gas version and they just pair up the same schematic with it this is the electric part here, and this is this is it. That's all there is to it. And you can see that, um, you know, you got your main motor here. You've got the heating element down here. You got some timer contacts going on there. Uh, you know, some of the basics. You've got the door switch there. You know, because when you open that door, it stops the dryer. Um, you have to push the start switch right there. And uh, we'll walk through all of this, how it works, a little bit. I'm, again, I'm not going to go into like every little detail because that knob does have like a million different modes. You can see them all up here, and they give you this little truth table what to expect on all the different contacts based on the the mode it's it's at, or where it is in, within the uh, the cycles. So this is actually a little different. This is is a schematic, but it's a little different than maybe what you're used to uh, for well at least those of you who are doing you know circuit board design and things like this this is set up more like a ladder diagram you know so if you're working on PLCs writing ladder logic and things like that uh, you'll be a little bit more familiar with this but basically you've got your high side on the left and then your low side on the right so typically you know this is your power usually all the switches would be on the left side and then your loads would be on the right side and you're trying to complete the circuit 
um, for each rung, okay, right through there. And um, we'll go through this a little bit, but down here is our heating element, and that's where the problem is. We know that we're not getting heat, so there's something wrong in this circuit. Why is this not getting completed, this rung here? So you can see, you know, we've got a couple thermostats in line with that. Uh, it goes up through the switch. Um, you can see that even on the low side, we've got another switch there. And you can see that its power should be across the two lines, giving us 240 volts there right across the heating element. And then we've got 120 volts there. So from one leg of that to neutral, we've got 120 volts, which drives the motor. Okay. So anyhow, well, let's just kind of go through if you were to, you know, walk up to this dryer, set the knob for some position, some mode, uh, you know, uh, timing mode or one of the other automatic modes. Uh, you should uh, set up the, the motor. So you set it to the mode, which should close these contacts. So you should at least have this contact closed and this contact close. And if you walk through this here, you'll see that, you know, we go through the thermal fuse for the motor and we have the motor here. It's a 120 volt motor. So you have this start side here to get it going and then it takes over with the main um, and it goes through. So we'll just kind of follow this right on through. So you've got both there activated since the, the you, have, you have a built in switch in the motor, uh, actually two switches. You get this one and then you've got this one over here. So if you follow the flow here, it goes right through there and then it's waiting for the push to start switch. So when you press that, you complete the circuit, the motor starts turning as long as you have the door switch closed. If you didn't have the door closed, it would be in this position completing the circuit for the drum lamp, so that in the lamp inside the dryer. Now I don't have that installed, but anyhow, that's what would happen if uh, you did. Uh, so it starts the dryer. This switch automatically kicks over to this position. Okay, so now it turns off the start winding, and now your path goes through there, down here, bypasses the push to switch, push to start switch, and then it completes it. So now it's a bypass. So as soon as you press the start, it takes over. You know, you let go of that push to start switch, and then the dryer can continue to run until you open the door switch or the timer uh, times out and turns it off when this is, when this is done. Uh, okay, so that switch closes and so does this one. Now this one closes the low side part of the heater circuit, so now you can get heat. And if we look at the high side part of the heater, you know you've got these thermostats here all the way through and through the two contacts there of the timer switch. So we'd expect to get power straight on through all of those pieces. So we just have to go through and just double check all of those parts and we should be uh, good to go. So we also have, this is kind of cool actually, so like depending on which mode you're in, you know, this is a timer switch that's also built into the, uh, the knob assembly. And we actually have a timer motor built into that knob assembly that it's actually like controlling the knob where it's at, like where it's actually advancing to uh, here. So you're actually putting power into that knob to rotate it through, which is kind of interesting. I always thought it was some other way of like a mechanical way, not like through a motor, but something that kind of kicks it through the different cycles. So if you're in the timer mode only, you know, it just goes right through and times out. And when it's done, boom, it opens up the contacts, kicks all this stuff open and it's done. If you're in an automatic mode, it keeps this part closed and then it is turned on and off based on whether or not the, um, the operating thermostat, you know, it's turning on and off, on and off, which kind of keeps it in that automatic mode and it can figure out uh, when the right time to turn off is, okay? And then you also have this, uh, this other thing here, you've got a thermostat heater and that's for like low heat modes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. If we have to, we probably don't have to talk about that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is identify some of the components here. And when you look at the dryer, you know, for the first time and you're looking at all the bits and pieces on the back, it's kinda of hard to identify which part is which you know you've got uh, a lot of parts here doing different things and how do you know what a heater looks like how do you know what you know what this high limit thermostat looks like the operating thermostat how do you know what all of these pieces are well 
what I usually do is just look at the wire colors, you know, so you can find out pretty quickly where everything is at just based on these wire colors. So, you know, if we look for the heater, we should see a red wire going to it. We should see an orange wire going to it. And then right next to that, butted right up to it, we should see the high limit thermostat with a red wire going off of that. So uh, let's look at it right now. Okay, so if we look at it, you can see right away that we've got two red wires and an orange wire. So that's pretty simple. Uh, we've got the heating element down there and we've got the high limit thermostat right there. So that's pretty simple. So now we found the heater and uh, we can just work our way right through. So we should see uh, continuity right across this thermostat here. And uh, these are, you know, like I said before, very simple thermostats, electromechanical uh, thermostats. So they should be normally closed right now at room temperature. And then when they hit temperature, they open up. So that's what I think is actually wrong here. I think one of the thermostats has failed and has an open contact. So let's take a quick measurement. Okay, so you can hear the beeping there and we do have cont continuity right across that thermostat. Um, and then if we want to look just at that low side real quick, that low side switch, uh, there's not going to be an easy way for us to check that unless we do a power because we need that motor to turn. But I don't believe that that is uh, the, the problem. Uh, so we'll test everything out else out first, then we'll work our way to that. Uh, but let's identify a few other components here. We've got another thermostat up here. This one has a red and white and a red. Um, and we can almost kind of track down which one this is by following the wires and we can look in the, at the diagram. Okay, so that one is the thermal cutoff, not resettable. Uh, then we have the operating thermostat and this is the thermostat uh, that actually maintains the temperature. Okay, so this one has red and white and red as well. So that could be kind of confusing. So this one is red and red and white. This one is red and white and red. So that would be very confusing. Uh, but the one clue that we've got here um, is that the operating thermostat works with the thermostat heater here which has two violet wires going to it. And that is, that is over here. We've got a thermostat over here with two violet wires and a red and red and white wire on both sides. Now, what is this device here? We've got two light blue wires going to it. We can take a quick look over at the schematic and you see that that is a thermal fuse, not resettable to the motor. Okay, so that's like if you had a clog in your in your ventilation anywhere, uh, you know, this would eventually heat up and build up a lot of heat and then trip and turn everything off. Okay, so but anyway, um, we should have continuity then between our operating thermostat. So let me just grab a quick measurement of that. Okay, and we do it. I'm going right across that red and white red and red and white wire. Now the other thing I want to just check real quick and I'm kind of, you might already know that, um, or you could probably tell that I know where the problem is already. Uh, I want to check the knob. So like I said, we should expect continuity between black, uh, black and uh, I think that's blue and then red. So uh, we've, we're going to look right in there and I'm going to set the knob first to an on position. Okay, there we go. So I'll stick my probe right in there in black. And then uh, red, you can hear it beeping there, so we're good. And then blue as well. So there's nothing wrong with the knob assembly or those contacts. Now, I will tell you that I already fixed this problem because when I looked at this the other night, I did not have continuity between this thermostat here. And this is the bad thermostat. And if we take the meter to this one, 
no continuity there at room temperature. Okay, so that is the bad thermostat. And that one was right here, and it was like a $4 part, super easy to fix. Uh, one screw, no big deal. And you can see that that one had the red and red and white wires going to it. And it was this one here, the thermal cutoff, not resettable uh, thermostat or trip. Um, so anyway, it, it works like a, uh, I believe it works just like a bimetal standard thermostat. Um, but this one uh, was open. So this was the problem. I swapped it out again with the $4 part. Just Googled it, found one on Amazon, uh, had it here the next day, popped it in, and bingo, everything worked. So um, so that was the problem. And uh, what co could have caused this? This is the interesting thing because these are very reliable. You know, you wouldn't expect it to just fail on its own. You know, so maybe the other day, you know, before the last load I ran that did have heat or maybe it didn't, uh, maybe I had something blocked, you know, on the the outside of the house is blocking that vent, you know, maybe the coil of uh, the coil of ventilation down here that the for the exhaust, uh, maybe that got, you know, bent up somehow, or maybe we pulled the dryer out for cleaning and then put it back in, back in and it kinked it up and it built, you know, maybe it just, uh, you know, kind of blocked the heat there and caused that temperature to rise up to the trip point. You know, so I'm not really sure exactly. Maybe it was something on the inside of the dryer. Maybe there was too, you know, too many clothes in there. Or, you know, who knows? But anyway, uh, fix that up real quick and threw the new thermostat or the new uh, 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 thermal fuse, the thermal cutoff uh, fuse in there or whatever you want to call it. And uh, now it works great. So anyhow, I just wanted to make a, a quick video. I guess it's not a quick video, but. Uh, just a video kind of documenting what all went down here with this uh, dryer fiasco. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching.